everyone and welcome to this session. My name is Thomas Pearson. I'm director of Data Insight in a company called Yara. So in Yara, we sell fertilizer to uh, as many farmers as we can all around the world. So our mission is to responsibly feed the world and protect the planet, which means that our goal is to ensure every farmer gets the most out of their crop and the highest yield possible. So we are about 16,000 employees, where majority of those are uh, in Latin America or in Brazil. Uh, we sell to about 160 countries, and we have a healthy revenue and profitability in the things we do. So how did the BI journey in Yara start? Well, um, we did a big transformation uh, about four years ago. Um, and, and one of the main reasons for that is because we realized that the current uh, setup that we had did not meet the business requirements. There were too many people who were downloading, you know, from the system down to Excel or into PowerPoint uh, and, and really did not use our BI setup. So uh, a lot of VLOOKUP in Excel and, and so on. So we made a big change and we did a, a RFP process, you know, looking at different tools. Power BI is, of course, uh, the tool we, have, we, we chose, but we also realized that we had to have uh, another tool to empower all the business user uh, to avoid them to do all the VLOOKUP in Power BI and to sure, uh, ensure good, uh, good uh, performance in what we do. So we basically decided then to move from, you know, being a European activity, uh, you know, a silo to have a global BI footprint. So at the moment we have, you know, uh, three and a half thousand users of the, of the setup. We have 500 Power BI Pro license holders and, and these are active, you know, we, have, we regularly do cleanup of our data. So these are active BI, uh, you know, license holder who actively uh, create and, and, and publish reports and we have now about 110 Altris license holders, you know, and, and they are, uh, you know, part of a super user network. The team uh, that I'm responsible for is, is not probably the biggest team if you consider the, the number of people we have using our, our, our system. We have a, a team of 15 people in total where uh, we have hired nine people uh, in Vilnius in Lithuania. Uh, as a kind of a center of excellence where we have developer and support. Um, but to be able to have such a small team and, you know, with this super user network, it's been really important that the regions, you know, so Americas, Asia, Africa, Europe, and so on, they also have regional BI resources like BI business analysts or BI advisors. And I'm happy to, to say and to announce that we have no or if there are, there are very, very few people uh, from, uh, you know, from external consultants. So uh, our solution is very much, uh, you know, self-made and, and we, we support uh, with internal resources. The architecture, you know, how is this set up? Uh, when we did this big move four years ago, we, we had to decide on, you know, uh, starting fresh. So we basically did a, a greenfield implementation uh, of, uh, of our system. Uh, we changed our database or, you know, basically bought a, an empty PC and we started filling it with data sources. Uh, so we have multiple uh, SAP uh, instances. We have a, a Sun 6 for the whole of Asia Africa uh, and a range of other data sources. So at the moment uh, in our data catalog, we, all, we have approximately 100 different data sources where, where everything goes through, you know, uh, Alteryx uh, and Alteryx workflows. So how has this been set up? You can see, you know, this little slide on the right hand side here, you have multiple data sources. We have one BI house, which is basically a database, SAP HANA, uh, where they each uh, department in Yara in a way uh, have their own BI room. That's how we kind of make things simpler. Uh, BI room being a folder or a schema. Uh, and in there, then we then of course use, use Alteryx uh, and then we connect them using either Power BI or Excel to then views uh, created by an Alteryx flow. So how do we in more depth use Alteryx? Well, um, as part of the move, uh, as I mentioned before, with the, with the global BI solution, 
I, you know, we couldn't just provide the new tool of Power BI and let people kind of do what they want to do. It was very important for us to, to also have a tool where business people could also do kind of ETL to, to take a, a data set, you know, to transform it the way they would like to have it, filter it the way they would like to have it, and then create a, a view that is being used by Power BI or Excel. So, so during the process of finding a BI tool uh, to meet our, our, our new needs, uh, Altrix came up as a very, very good solution, especially the intuitivity of Altrix was very important. So, uh, you know, considering that we are a small team of, you know, say 10 developers, uh, the possibility that Altrix gave us, you know, with now having 110 developers is that if somebody would like to do something like in Asia or in South Africa or in Europe or in, in, in Sao Paulo or in Brazil, uh, then they can actually go ahead, you know, within the framework of the guidelines that we have set. So they can actually create their own data set, you know, connect to either SAP, connect to, uh, you know, say a web service or a different SQL database, for example, and then they will do the ETL. Uh, and we are the one who verify and we are the one who schedules it. So, so all of a sudden we didn't, you know, we didn't become like the bottleneck of development as we kind of empowered all these people. And that was very important to, to make business feel part of the solution. Because if it was only us doing this, then it will not be as successful as, as we have done it. And I think also uh, one of the game changer was that with Altrix compared to say, uh, you know, regular uh, ETL in, in a HANA environment or BW environment was that Altrix allowed us to connect to other data sources quite quickly. And you will see that's part of the demo today as well, uh, especially SharePoint was a, was a game changer. And then of course, you know, the possibility then of, of uh, you know, having business people with some database knowledge, uh, creating these subsets and, and uh, basically connecting to say a, a huge sales order book for the whole of Europe. And, you know, if they were working, for example, in finance, they will only, or in sales, they will then take, use Altrix to connect to that large data set and, and filter out what they want. Uh, that, of course, results into better performance and also better governance. And we also avoid having these local ETLs in Excel and Power BI reports. So, because if, if we didn't provide a tool to kind of combine actual data with maybe forecast data sitting in Excel in SharePoint, then they will have to do this in Excel or in Power BI. And all of a sudden you have all the data modeling happening there as opposed to in Altrix. So how is it uh, integrated into our BI solution in more details? Well, the, 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 uh, the, the picture that you showed before, I showed you before in regards to the BI house, if you tilt this on the side, this is kind of the clue here. Uh, we have all the data sources on the left-hand side. You will see some of them, like this is SAP systems and Sun 6, as I mentioned before. They go into what is called HANA views, a different department are, you know, doing replication of data in here. And then this is where Altrix comes in, because, you know, if we were to connect Power BI directly onto HANA views, you know, the performance there will not be that great. And also they will have access to a lot of information uh, you know, it would be a bit more difficult for them to create things because it could be a lot of yeah, irrelevant information that is stored in these large HANA views. So that's why we introduced Altrix. So those 110 license holder, what they will do is that they will connect to a HANA view, for example, if the data comes from SAP, uh, and then they will do their ETL uh, or transformation, and then they will store that into a dedicated BR room, a folder. So they will create a view. So say, for example, sales order, you know, sales delivery, you know, forecast data, you know, procurement data, and that will be in that view. And then the super user on the side here, uh, Excel or uh, Power BI, they will then connect to a predefined view that someone has done in Altrix. So that's the whole clue. Plus also, of course, as everyone knows, you can also connect Altrix to non-ERP or, or local files and so on. So to, to show you uh, a couple of uh, scenarios where we have really utilized Altrix and taking it to the next level. Uh, I will then have uh, my colleague or Darius, who's a, a BI development and, uh, and, uh, and support manager in Vilnius uh, to present then uh, the solution that we have built for a couple of these scenarios. 
So thank you for your time. And if any questions, just you know, feel free to send me an email uh, or contact us, and we are happy to share our, our setup and our solution. Thank you, Thomas. Hi, I'm Darius, and I am BI Development and Support Manager. And today I will show you some of the examples where we use Altrix in Yara. Let's begin with Altrix custom macros, uh, which like most of Yara macros was uh, created uh, by BI developers here in Vilnius. So let's, uh, let's start by dragging a macro here and choosing a file in SharePoint Online. So let's Take this file, a copy path of it, so it's CSV file, and then enter path here. Uh, we do not need sheet name uh, since uh, it is CSV, not uh, Excel. And here we have advanced options where we can choose if first row contains that or not from which line to start import, a delimiter, and encode of a file. And then this macro allows to import multiple files or file lists. So let's add credentials. And password. And let's see what we get if we press run. Okay, let's wait a little bit. Okay, so we can see the data is uploaded from file. And if we go to file, we can see that it's the same data. So this is a SharePoint uh, online uh, macro, which is dedicated to uh, help users to enrich uh, the main data with Excel files, which uh, can be stored in SharePoint and accessed and uh, modified by users who have correct access. And since I do not have a lot of time, uh, I won't be showing uh, other examples, but just uh, explain a little bit about two other macros that might be interesting for you. Um, it is a SharePoint online file output macro uh, dedicated uh, to help users uh, to store their data in SharePoint online. Uh, from other sources, for example, API or database. And Salesforce custom macro. Um, since the latest uh, Salesforce macro, which Altrix uh, is providing, uh, does not allowing to share uh, workflows between other PCs, uh, we created our own with a similar functionality. Uh, which uh, allows to share uh, workflows and store uh, workflows in Altrix Gallery without uh, a lot of uh, additional configuration. Um, all, all of these macros are created uh, with Python. So Python is a really great tool um, which uh, Altrix providing uh, to use in its workflows. And then I want to show you a um, couple of workflows which we use for our housekeeping. Not only 110 of our Altrix users are creating uh, workflows for business, but we use them, uh, we create them for uh, for ourselves. So this 
Altrix workflow is using Python to extract Active Directory data, users data, and help us to maintain uh, users and their authentications. Other workflow which I want to share with you is um, also uh, one which uh, helps us with our housekeeping. This workflow gets data from Power BI API and help us uh, to catalog uh, Power BI reports, uh, help us to spot um, reports which is no longer used, helps us to force users to add descriptions to their reports and track how users are uh, behaving by our rules. And last workflow which I want to show you is um, our chaining uh, workflow, which basically um, ties up uh, workflows which are dependent from one each from each other. So if we have three workflows, which uh, um, first workflow generates a table which is used in second workflow and second workflow generates a table which use which is used in third workflow then we chain them together and then we know exactly that the second workflow will run after first one is finished so yeah so like i said uh, we use altrix really widely and um, yeah this is what i wanted to show you um, i hope that was uh, useful and um, i hope i hope you liked it so thanks all for listening